best friend forever girls let's get cocktails <sighs> hello beautifuls welcome back to my chanel my loves hello hello it's a new week and it's time for a new show my lovelies actually is it a new week i don't even know anymore is this what day is it today is it monday it's not monday it's thursday it's not a new week at all <laughs> February is taking it right out of me, loves. How are you doing? I feel like it's taking it out of a lot of us, shall we say. Oh my god. Ah! Well, my lovelies, I've done it again. I've done it again. I hear you ask, what have I done again? Actually, hence. And the answer is, I've done it again. I have found another lost to time plastic surgery reality TV show, my loves. This one, however, is a little bit different. Today, we're going to be watching season one, episode one of Dr. 90210. And I feel there's definitely like a RuPaul joke in there being like, Dr. 90210, hi, or something like that. Do you know what I mean? We all gotta die of something. <laughs> So my lovelies, when I started the swan and bridal plasty, a lot of you guys came into the comments and also I got a few Instagram DMs about this show, Dr. 90210. Now, I managed to scour eBay and actually season one is relatively easy to get hold of. So this is the season one that I got. I got it on actual DVD and I got it from Ubalier's eBay and this is what it looks like. I mean, that's a pretty intense... That's a pretty, pretty, pretty intense cover art right there. You can see bosoms and a fooper potentially. Everyone likes a bit of foop, don't they? And this actually came brand new and wrapped, so I had to unwrap it especially to start the season. Now, season one was really easy to get hold of. And season two and beyond, I think there's like six or seven series of this. So potentially a lot of content for us to watch. <laughs> you can't get any of the other ones on disc. You can only watch them, I believe, on Amazon. Nope, Hulu. You can only watch them on Hulu. And I don't even think they have season one, actually. So, I'm going to read you the back. The back says, Dr. 90210, this riveting reality show reveals what plastic surgery is like on the other side of the knife, and it is eye-opening. So, I believe that this, and oh, what does that even say? Beverly Hills, where everyone accepts plastic. All right, okay. I believe this show follows the life of the doctors more than their patients, but obviously their patients are going to have a huge part in the show itself. Now, I never watched this. I've never even really read about it because I didn't want to give myself any spoilers as to what it's about. I don't know if it's going to be like a Janice Dickinson style, like every episode is a bit different rather than it being like a uh, sort of series storyline. But it does actually say here, the best TV show of 2004. Why is it always 2004? What was it with the early 2000s that was just plastic surgery heavy, like extreme plastic surgery heavy. Now, I don't know if there's going to be extreme plastic surgery in this. I don't know if it's just going to be the day in the life of your plastic surgeon doing little bits of nose jobs and a breast here and there. Mummy's got breasts. So I guess it's exciting to find out. A unique glimpse into the elite world of cosmetic surgery and the day-to-day -day lives of top plastic surgeons in Beverly Hills. Go! This series shows firsthand what goes on behind the scenes of the doctors who live this Beverly Hills lifestyle and the people People who take on the emotional journey of plastic surgery. Uh. <laughs> now, I don't know about you, but I'm pretty excited to start. We're coming to the end of all of the Swan seasons and episodes. I think we've only got two left. I think there's one more and then the pageant, girls. Are you going to make it to the pageant? Why aren't you making it to the pageant? So I thought, why don't we start this before we finish that one so we can satiate our little plastic surgery appetites, can we, my loves? <laughs> I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore, my lovelies. It's actually produced by the same people that made Bridal Plasty, E Entertainment. So, are we in for some drama? I think we might be in for some drama. Well, my lovelies, get your beverages at the ready. Join me in your little sit down. Pop your oh, hanger in. Oh, hang on, hang on. There we go. And let's watch Dr. 90210, girls. I'm Robert Ray. I'm a Beverly Hills plastic surgeon. My professors thought I was crazy. It's the most competitive place in the world. But I want to conquer the mountaintop. So here I am, Beverly Hills. The Mount Conquer the Mountain. Nice. I'm Dr. Wow, I cannot bear loud noises in my old age. Right, turn it down a little bit. Robert Kotler, a Beverly Hills cosmetic surgeon. I'm at the peak of my game, and I think I've seen it all. Peak of your game? I'm Dr. Richard Ellenbogen. I'm passing the torch to the younger plastic surgeons. Ooh. Not only do I have to show them what to do, but I have to show them what not to do. Okay. So hang on, is that guy, I didn't even, I, we're going to learn their names as we get into this series, no doubt. I don't know their names immediately off the bat because I don't actually recognize them from anything else. So the last surgeon there spoke that he's not only like a plastic surgeon, but he's like 
He takes like fledgling plastic surgeons under his wing to teach them what to do and what not to do. So I wonder if this is going to be like a maybe a little bit like botched. Like maybe we'll see some patients come in who've had some bad work done and they want revisions, which could be quite interesting, actually, because a whole part of the cosmetic surgery industry that we haven't really covered on my channel is revisions if they're necessary. Oh, it's getting juicy in here today, girls. Giorgio Armani, girls. Raj Kenodi is my name. As a child, I caught myself obsessing with beauty. Thanks, Raj. Ooh, me too. Home. It was a natural desire to be a plastic surgeon. Beverly Hills girl. Oh, what's this? Oh, it's very, I want a famous face. Oh my goodness. Oh really, Beverly Hills, but it's a woman's curvy body, girl. What's going on today? Today. That was it, that was the intro. Okay, first of all, we just have to say that was the calmest plastic surgery intro we've ever seen. If we compare it to the swan. Da -da 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 -da, the swan girls. <laughs> Only one will make it to the pageant girls. Although bridal plasties was a little bit like, Stop. Which was particularly a little bit strange, I think. But to be honest, the entirety of Bridal Plasty was just bonkers from start to finish. Are we, dare I say it, in for a more calm plastic surgery show? I just don't know. I can't wait to see how this turns out. Today is going to be a very busy day. You have your three follow-ups in the morning, mm -hmm. and then you have about 17 consultations, new patients. <gasps> okay. 17 I'm Robert Ray. I'm a Beverly Hills plastic surgeon. I've been practiced five years. Let's take a look. Let me get five the camera years. out. And uh, take your top off, sweet, if you don't mind. Okay. I did oh. general surgery at UCLA, and I did my fellowship oh, at Howard Medical School. Them. My professors thought I was crazy. They told me, Robert, I don't know if I would be comfortable about being like, yes, <laughs> with a camera, <laughs> just in a consultation room. First, I'm going to have to it's move the past. There we go. This man here that we've just seen say like, excuse me, madam, take your top off. Blah. Now he's photographing her, which I know is part of cosmetic surgery. So don't worry. I don't find it strange, even though the abstract concept of it is kind of odd. This man talking here in this black suit does not look like the same man as here. These, these look like two different men. This man and this man look completely different. Do you know what I mean? <gasps> Have we got like mistaken twins? See, that's why I, like, I love the Beverly Hills. One of 12 of the world's plastic surgeons are, are going to be within two miles of you. But I want to go to the mountain town. One in 12. Why are there so much plastic surgeons in Beverly Hills? Is it like, I guess Beverly Hills must have this huge, what's the word? Huge reputation for like plastic people living plastic lives. I must admit actually the swan, which was around the same time as this, must have also been based in Beverly Hills, right? I think it was. I'm pretty sure it was. And I mean, clearly bridal plasty was as well. I wanted to conquer the mountaintop. So here I am in Beverly Hills. And when you get hard, not only does it get hard, but it crawls up a little bit. Uh, people say, oh, you have a great job. You're surrounded by naked women. It's very technical for us. Keep this in mind. I've seen 10,000 undressed women. It's just another undressed woman. Okay, that's kind of an interesting and good thing, I guess, because the last thing you really want is your plastic surgery to be like, ah, breasts. I, I don't know what he meant by that the comment there. If you hear this, so this comment, he said, when you get hard, they'll go up. <laughs> Oh, tea girls are quaking. Mary loves dick. No, I can't say that. I can't say that about my sisters. Get dressed so I can give you a hug. Goodbye. Okay. <laughs> um, he's actually in surgery tomorrow. Get dressed so I can give you a good hug. Goodbye. <laughs> oh, how sweet. But how about Thursday? We have a great staff. Most of them are former um, patients. Christy, for example. Oh. Great attitude. He does do celebrities. I had my breast done by him, and he just really liked me and thought I was a great person, so he offered me a job here, and it just worked out with my schedule, and I love it. How hey, easy! You chance, can you look at your book and let me know what you have for a post-op? Norma knows everything that goes down in Beverly Hills. She made two doctors very successful before me, but she's also very attractive. She has a great heart, but she oh. knows the business. Uh, through the belly button, it's trans-umbilical, and it runs 6,500. How are things? Good. You notice that Christy's always in the room with us. One is to make the patients feel a little more comfortable. But the second reason is, well, for legal reasons. I want to protect <laughs> myself. Are you nice what? and soft? Is it <laughs> I love the fact that there, it was, it was just like, well, you know, she's here to just make you all feel comfortable. But actually, it's for legal reasons. Yeah, I need to protect myself. 
Ah, that was an interesting segment to have in there. That could have been said in any other way to make it feel a bit more friendly, I guess. But I guess also your plastic surgeon isn't there to necessarily be like, your best friend forever, girls. Let's get cocktails. (sighs) But there to be like a professional person. So I guess they do have legal considerations to take in mind at the same time. At least we're seeing something actually that says we're taking legal considerations because everything else we've seen, how do we know they're taking legal considerations? Let's be honest, it's reality TV. Is it nice and soft? I hope so. Yeah. Chrissy, check this out. I mean, she's totally completely soft. Mm -hmm. Oh, come on. She looks great. Grab the breast. (gasps) Sometimes, left hand, not so good massaging right breast. Right hand, awesome massaging left breast. So what happens is sometimes left breast, much, much softer than right breast. There's a huge pressure to look beautiful here in Los Angeles. You know, your personality kind of changed. Ooh, it's kind of a little bit awkward to watch something like that. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. I'm going to be getting my chest done next year. And I'm a little bit like, oh, is someone going to be like, this one's really soft. This one's not so soft. This, I come and have a feel of this. This one's really soft. Oh, but sometimes this side is not quite so soft as this side. Like, I don't know how I feel about that. I guess it's one of those things that you just kind of have to accept that it's done in a medical environment, even though then I felt a little bit like, is there really a mm-hmm. I don't know how much of this I'm going to be able to show on YouTube before Susan's like, I saw that, you disgusting pervert. You know, your personality kind of changed. I met the ultra shy Angie. I mean, you wouldn't, you wouldn't even look me in the eye when I met you. Plastic surgery is, okay. we have a lot in common with psychiatry. We're psychiatrists with knives. Oh, These women me. really, truly come in very stressed out. You have to be perfect nowadays, for better or for worse. Women are, Highly relatable. I think, more beautiful and they are more beauty conscious, but I see a change, I see a transition. I think men more so than women now. Have I had plastic surgery? What do you think? Uh, yeah, I've had plastic surgery. Do you think this profile is, uh, you know, nature made? Come on. Love it. Actually, to think, actually, probably back in 2004, that was quite trailblazing to hear a plastic surgeon, a male plastic surgeon at that, say, yeah, I've had plastic surgery. But also that kind of makes me like him a little bit more because let me paint you a picture. Put it this way. You go into a makeup counter. You have a very specific idea of what you would like uh, for your makeup to do. You come across, let's say, a middle-aged man who's never worn makeup in his life trying to sell you a product that says this is going to last all day, it's going to be shine-resistant, sweat-resistant, waterproof, it's going to make your skin look amazing whilst also not going anywhere for 24 hours. You'll be like, but you're not wearing makeup. Like, mm, I don't believe, I'm not sure I believe you. I don't see a lick of makeup on your face. At least that's how I would feel. I'm more likely to trust someone if they've gone through something similar to me or have like a similar expertise or actually are in any way, shape or form professional enough to actually understand what it is that they provide from a patient or a customer point of view as well. Dr. Ray's house. Hi, Hayley Ray. I'm just working on the 1099s. Mm-hmm. I have an awesome wife Aww. who actually uh, runs my business. She's, She's my uh, common sense. She's my the boss, really. Hey, Norma. The boss. Hi, uh, uh, Robert wanted me to fax over his op report. Faxing. So I'm just fax it to you now. We Aww. met uh, right here in Beverly Hills. She came to be an actress, and I came to conquer the plastic surgery world. It doesn't make sense. I didn't tell my wife she needed any surgery, but uh, you know, seeing all these women come through looking great. Uh, she decided one day that she wanted to have implants herself, so we've done that. Oh my gosh, the highest rate? Oh, that's crazy. I was minus $50,000 in debt for my practice, could not pay my suppliers, and basically I was just a few days from going under. Then I met Haley. Oh, I already spoke to him. It was a mess, it was just a mess. Uh, There was, at one point we realized 25 of his patients had not paid for surgery, which is a lot. Oh, that's all, could you imagine not paying? I bet those patients were like, ha, 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 I've scammed again. You're not getting any more filet mignon? Get out of my house. Imagine going in for plastic surgery and just not paying. Baby. Monday through Friday, I'm pretty much a single parent. Oh my gosh. And that's tough. He'll work, yeah, 16 hour days, five days a week, at least. He should probably go a bit early. He needs to be there by 11 probably, right? I think it's important to be in Beverly Hills for a plastic Let's surgeon just because that's where most people associate plastic surgeons to be and 90% of the stars are here. I won't name names, but my husband's operated on many of them. Patients are attracted ah. to this area. And actually for a very good reason. 
brutal competition. Oh, competition I guess it makes good sense. because it keeps you on the edge. It keeps you sharp. If someone landed in Beverly Hills, <laughs> didn't know anything else other than that they wanted to have cosmetic surgery and were determined to have it here, I would tell you that their odds of success were pretty darn good. The sun. Something about that guy saying I'm at the peak of my game makes me feel a little bit like awkward. I don't know. He seemed very shaky in that little section and I'm trying not to be ageist here but I don't know if a shaky plastic surgeon is the plastic surgeon you want to go to am I allowed to say that is that a bit far is that a bit naughty is that a bit poons tell you that their odds of success were pretty darn good the sun may come from the east to the west but the plastic surgical techniques that are accepted all over the world come from the west to the east oh What a weird thing to say. Why would you say that? But all right. She had Dr. Ray do her breast implants and stomach. Which, by the way, came out great. She looks good. <laughs> <laughs> well, Robert knows. She looks good. Three I took a eight. photograph of myself. Oh. That's when I really notice the puffiness in my eyes. It just oh. it stands out above everything else. A patient. Perhaps looking at me doesn't really stand out, but in the photographs it does, and it's very annoying to me. We're talking mm. about surgery and puffiness under the eyes. Do you notice it now, looking at it? No, I actually, I never noticed it. I still don't notice what you're talking about, but if it's something that bothers you, Thank you. It's you know, you need, you need to do it. <laughs> that is a very sensible friend. That is exactly it. You should never get plastic surgery to appease other people in your life, ever. It should always be about your personal choice your personal needs and your personal want. And that's why you meet with several different doctors to come to a conclusion of exactly what is and isn't possible. And I kind of like that, that she said, although I don't necessarily see the problem, if it's something that you want to do, and you know, taking all the correct measures to get those wants and needs addressed, then go for it, my loves. I am a completely pro-plastic surgery. I've had some work done. I'm getting some more work done, my loves. Plastic surgery has been a fundamental part of my journey, but I, you don't have to be like me to have plastic surgery in your journey. And absolutely no one on this planet ever should ever force somebody else to get plastic surgery. Dr. Ray Hi. was someone who impressed us. Yeah. Because he was very straightforward and very honest. Okay. Um, as a matter of fact, when I went in there, because I'm getting my... The fat pockets taken away from my eyes. That's and when I went in there the first time, he turned me away, he sent me home, said he couldn't do it because his test showed that my blood was too thin. So I went to another doctor and had it checked, and it wasn't that lab air was wrong, but the fact that he was so careful really impressed me as well. Your blood was too thin. Maybe you'd had too much caffeine or something? Robert. Oh, mm. you are huge. Look at your arms. This is called a snap test. So your eye just snaps right back. So that's great. That means you're, you're just a healthy young Snatch person. Snatch the eyeball right out, girl. So the whole thing with your blood kind of freaked me out. It turns out it was just a lab error. Uh, it can actually oh. bleed in here and cause some visual problems. So we don't want to do that. We want to be very, very meticulous, very, very carefully. I'm not really nervous. It's been explained to me pretty well, and I feel pretty confident with getting this done. Comes tomorrow, might be a little different, but as I sit here right now, I'm not really nervous. Awesome I love see this you. show. It's so pretty for me. Also, that guy is jacked in a very strange... He's like skinny jacked. Very strange. I, so far, I'm really enjoying the show. I feel like it's giving quite a, a well-rounded approach to plastic surgery. The thing is, when it comes to any of these plastic surgery shows, they are on TV, so they do amp things up a little bit. But like the idea that they went away, the surgeon said, no, we need to test your blood. I'm actually going to turn you away because it's incorrect. He went somewhere else, got a different blood test, came back and it was a lab error. Like that is a great way of being like, okay, that's we've come to the conclusion of a problem there and we we can continue like i actually quite like that i feel like it's quite unusual in regards to the shows that we watch anyway and uh, robert i'll see you tomorrow thank you very much you guys okay okay and you just want a regular breast augmentation right right a so regular breast augmentation right there. oh hello my name's Carrie, and I was born with a symmetrical breast, which means oh. that one is slightly larger than the other. Wow. I went to see a doctor to see if he could try to fix this problem, but he was not qualified. He was previously trained as a dentist and is now a cosmetic surgeon. I went back to him four times, and he botched every surgery. And this is what brings me to a Beverly Hills plastic surgeon. And I'm just so scared that I might never be fixed. Oh my god. Suddenly this show has really taken a turn. This poor girl, Kerry, 20 years old, asymmetric breasts, went to a 
plastic surgeon who was previously a dentist and botched her four times. Remember what I said earlier about the part that we haven't come across really on my Chanel yet is the whole revision side of plastic surgery. This is going to be really complicated in a revision sense. So I'm fascinated to know how they can help Kerry here because that is botched four times. Botched four times. Oh my God. Plastic surgery drama, girls. Wow. You know, I can't imagine what Carrie went through. I mean, it's yeah. multiple operations. She's very young and she still looks terrible. I'm just scared that my expectations aren't going to be met once again. Oh my goodness. For 20 years old, 20 years old and have four botched breast augmentations. Wow. Versace girls, to your Dr. Ray's Ifwalier. So how many operations do you have? I've had... You know what, surprisingly, I have quite a few patients that come to me seeking repair for botched breast surgeries. At some wow. point, you got a massive infection. Yeah, that right? was the second one. <gasps> then you went in and made that oh, decision below my. your breast. Why is that scar so thick? Did it have stitches on the outside? Well, it wasn't that thick, but... Oh. My. God. I have a strong stomach, sis. But that is a lot. Okay, um, I'm not going to be able to show you what that is, but I'm just going to briefly describe what it is I've just seen. Um, so she had stitches underneath her breast. The skin tissue was black. Rotted. Oh my God. I, this surgeon, whoever you've gone to, Carrie, name, shame, prison. And that's the Darjeeling. But that's when I got the infection and the wound never closed. So it was, uh... it was, a, it was a big, you know, massive like hole. Okay. I've had occasion to really kind of mull over this and really think it over. No guarantee that's going to turn out perfect. Exactly. For <sighs> sure it won't turn out perfect. Yeah. If we can just get you to look better. Now, having painted a very realistic picture, she can proceed or not do anything about it. And that's, that's how we handle these difficult problems. Uh, how, there are some that they are so damaged that there's not much I can do. Wow, this has taken a turn. Bernardino girls, Carrie's house. Oh, Carrie. To be honest about everything, what makes you feel good about him doing it? His when you've already uh, been through a doctor that operated on you three times. Four. Four times, trying to. Just the way he is, the way he approaches it, he spent a lot of time with me. And I saw all of his pictures. I saw his reconstruction pictures. I saw everything. I never looked at my previous doctor's wow. work. So that's a big change that I've made too. You have to look at their work. When I Oh my goodness. I mean, Carrie has really paid the price here. Look at your doctor's work. I mean, back in 2004, well, clearly this had been slightly before because she'd had four operations. So maybe even 2002, 2003 era. I mean, I I now use the website realself.com and it's a great way of like looking up any surgeon that you're planning on going to and seeing like pages and pages and pages of reviews of these people to see actual life people and now of course we have things like youtube as well it becomes really easy to see people's works and not just what's on their website i do feel quite sorry for carrie that she was really young between 18 and 20 getting this surgery that i don't blame her at all for for not knowing that she should have looked at you know, a bank of work and gotten references. It seems like no one in her life explained that to her or none of her friends explained that to her. See, the thing is, even by watching things like Extreme Makeover, which would have been on the TV at this time, the plastic surgery edition, they didn't even, they never once said like, oh, make sure you check people's work. Make sure you see multiple people to understand what they can give to you. Just like maybe, ugh, so many things went wrong for Carrie to be botched four times. That is heartbreaking. When I viewed some websites before about the, uh reconstructed surgery what they say is good doesn't look that great to me yeah exactly. is your expectations no, I know gonna that. be real high where you're gonna come out with the perfect well, i've shape? learned that you can't have high expectations i'm not going in there thinking no i'm gonna perfect. be perfect can't no. get any worse it can only get better from here <laughs> better than it no it won't get any worse i just don't want to <laughs> see your hopes crumble it's my turn now exactly. i mean that that guy that guy her father there was actually quite actually raised an important point of being like, are you sure? Like, are you sure this is exactly what you want to do? Because being botched four times is a lot, but I really hope Dr. Ray can do something for her. This is so stressful to watch. Okay, taking a right turn, girls. Been through too much. 
This is one big lesson, but I wouldn't change it for the world. Yeah. I wouldn't be who I am right now. Yeah. She's 20? That guy looked a bit old for her, but I don't know, not to be age gappist. No, no, don't. That's not very nice. Oh, oh it's a girl. Peanut. Okay. Peanut. 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 Oh. Look at uh, that TV. I'm going to be running a little late, as usual. I miss out on time with my family. Sometimes my baby will cry when she I like him wearing a black suit. Oh, I've paused it right on the moment of his in darkness, girls. I really like him wearing a black suit. Is there a reason why we don't see plastic surgeons in black suits? I mean, I'm particularly partial to all black outfits anyway. Can you tell? Can you tell? <laughs> Is it something to do with the idea that like, you know, when you step into a courtroom, if you're wearing a white shirt, you're meant to be seen as more innocent and angelic. Whereas I'm like, what are you trying to mark? I didn't finish that thought. What I meant was do we not see plastic surgeons in all black outfits, because we associate white with trustworthiness. Also I love this voice. I'm an elegant woman stuck in the agar. Gout. I've got gout. It's a scandal. I've got a degree. I miss out on time with my family. Sometimes my baby will cry when she sees me. Doesn't know who I am. I think daddy's coming home soon. No! Okay, that is tough. Dr. A, I just happened to pick up the phone because I thought it was my wife. I had to, to let my knees go. I'm so sorry. We started so early this morning. Daddy's not answering. Have a good night. Bye-bye. No! Poor Sydney's right. becoming a night owl. We thought long and hard about this. We came to the conclusion it's better for her to be a night owl rather than not having contact with her father. For a young surgeon going into practice solo by himself, he may be biting off more than he realizes. If you find a mentor, if you find a teacher who's been doing it for 20, 30 years, who's very good at it, not only you learn the craft, but you also learn how to deal with life. That's a in very good point. To that particular profession. Very good point. As long as you gel with My your mentor, that 7 is. To 11, 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. Including a weekend day. Wow. You are doing too much, sir. I hope that nowadays, if you're still practicing now, that that is much more organized because your child will be what? I guess if your child was like two there, when was that? 18 years ago? 2004 was 18 years ago. She'll be 20 now. Wow. 18 years ago. Dr. Ray's house girl. Hi, I've sweetheart. got gout. Sorry it took so long. I'm sorry I'm running late. Uh, hi, sweetheart. Hi, sweetie. Mm, that's been so kiss. I don't know which kind of meat you wanted, so I just got a little bit of uh, ground beef. Why don't you get comfortable? Okay. Grounded beef. Oh. Chris and Seth was on tonight. Is that cartoon? The Have you ever seen The Grinch? You've never seen The Grinch? No. I was in Brazil when I was <laughs> I was in Brazil when I was a child. <laughs> I was born in Brazil. I'm not going to tell you the year. <laughs> Can you say quick man? The Brazil. way I came to America is some of the Mormon missionaries stopped in our house in Brazil and saw a sad situation. It was sort of a poor household and invited all four siblings to come live with them in America. A. I'm sorry, what was that? Of the Mormon missionaries stopped in our house in Brazil. More missionaries? Is that Mormon missionaries stopped past their house and invited all of the children to come to America? I mean, it's really worked out for this guy, but that does sound a little bit dubious, don't you think? Just like religious people turning up to your house and being like, we're taking your children now. Goodbye, everybody else. Sending them to a different country. Hmm. And invited all four siblings to come live with them in America. A I mean, they cut that sentence right up, didn't they? Amen. Yay. That is a lot of spaghetti I mean, for a child. I mean, no matter how you pack it, that's what I am, you know? And I immigrated to the United States to pursue the American dream. He had dreams of Harvard when he was a poor kid in Brazil. He did it. Everything he sets his mind to, he does. That so, is incredible. I'm going to gym real quick. I'm going to come back and review those tapes. Okay, I'm going to go. 11 p.m. gym oh, after a full day of good. work. Yeah, it's, it hit again. I'm pregnant. And my morning oh, sickness basically starts in the afternoon and lasts all night. Oh. So it's a little rough. Like, it's hitting big time now. Okay. Hint, hint, stay home and look after her so I can relax. Yes. <laughs> Just 10 minutes. Okay. The working out drives me nuts. I tell him I think three times a week should be enough. He insists on working out six times a week. Because it really helps my neck, you know? I just, uh... I know, I know. 
relaxing all that, so. Okay. I'm What's with the music? Like is this a drug? Is he but cheating? What's happening? The fact that these things are a priority in his life. Why are you gonna shop? Mm-hmm. And what else? All right. Ten minutes for you. I'll be right back, okay? I promise. Fast. Okay, I'll be right back. I'll be right back. Hmm. Oh, at least the okay, gym is in his I'm house. I'll help you in a second, okay? Plastic surgery is a very funny business. If you're a slob, you're not gonna make it. It's the bottom line. You're not gonna make it in Beverly Hills. One of the criteria I think plastic surgeon has to have more than any other specialty in medicine is ego. Oh, did you hear that? Ego is a prerequisite to being a plastic surgeon back in 2004. I guess there is some level of truth to that, isn't there? I mean, the thing is, you're more than welcome to pick your plastic surgeon. I'm very choosy when it comes to plastic surgeons. I have met a particularly egotistical plastic surgeon before and thought that that was the end of my journey. I was like, oh, I can't actually get what I want. I can't get to a point where I'll be happy. And then a year later, I met with a different set of plastic surgeons and absolutely connected in such a different way. And let me just tell you, if a plastic surgeon has too much ego or is a bit nefarious vibes, should we say, get out of there. Do not go to them. Okay, finish this video and then we're gonna sleep, okay? Cause mommy... Let's put her to bed. Oh. I would love it if he took a partner because it would mean more time for him to be at home with me. I've convinced him that at some point he really should because he's so busy and he doesn't understand that life is much more than just his practice. Sometimes the family has to put up with the demands of the profession because if you are a conscientious physician, you don't drop the ball. So you can That's see here very true. that I have all kinds of operations. I have a liposuction and a nose operation, facelift, skin lasering, breast augmentation. You always go VHS! on the Oh, breast surgery? No. Buttock surgery? <laughs> <laughs> he always chooses the right moment to do it, right when I'm feeling nauseous. <laughs> what time do I have to be there tomorrow? Seven. That's a bit naughty. I love you, sweetheart. I love oh. you, sweetheart. We're peeping at you through the lady. The moon! Right, is this the next what's Oh my goodness, what's this music? The ritual is beginning. The ritual is beginning. Satan, my Satan. fat pocket's taken away from my eyes. Open part of the gown to the back. Okay. okay. If I bleed too much, it can go behind the eye and cause me actually to go blind. Snatched. Oh. Dr. Ray has really explained to me in detail all the complications behind it, and they're very minimal. So I do actually want to say, it is genuinely quite scary when you are in your gown, You've been stripped away of your kind of like identity because you're just in a gown and you have to like lay down and then someone's like, we're going to give you your anesthetic now. And then you literally look up, you count back from 10 or 5 or whatever it is and you're gone. Like that is actually quite a scary process. I have had both uh, cosmetic surgery and medical surgery, shall we say before. I haven't been put under yet for cosmetic surgery. The first time that I'm experiencing that will be in May of this year. And I'm not gonna lie, that's the part that I'm most nervous about. I'm not nervous about the doctors. I'm not nervous about traveling. I'm not nervous about like waking up. I'm nervous about the moment of going under. That's what I'm nervous about. But I'm also nervous in a way that's not going to stop me from doing it. It's just kind of like a consideration to have. And they did a really good way there of making it feel like oh, we're, we're going to go under. Like that kind of a little bit of like, oh, what's going to happen? Right. Let's see what Dr. Robert Ray has to say, girls. Morning. Everything, everything come out all right? Perfect. <laughs> Oh, I'm excited to get it done. Fashion mm -hmm. icon. Daytime tweed with an evening chiffon. My job is to walk into the offering room and set the tone. If I walk in nervous, everyone will be nervous. That's and, true. And uh, they call us the captains of the ship. And really, Why they call it theater. If I pull the fat too hard, it'll bleed in the back of his eye. Oh. And you go blind. So it's not a joke. It's a very serious business. Here we go. Time. Okay, guys, as per tradition, we always start with a prayer. It's a lovely view from, from the center. Father, we're so grateful for the opportunity to be here. We're grateful to have assembled a, a wonderful prayer. team. Ooh. We ask to, to bless this young man that he'll have years of enjoyment from this operation and that he'll have, make a fast recovery. We say these things humbly in the name of Jesus Christ to you. This is this, the oh. laser is like a knife. Can you see? Can you see that? Yeah. Isn't that cool? Wow. Before I start a forest fire, 
My strategy is I hate scars. So I participated in either developing or uh, practicing techniques that are very low scar. So it's very important to get rid of all the, cell, the cells in the skin, the remnants of which we're removing right now. Basically, all I'm doing is I'm trying to find a little bit of fat, nice and clean. Oh, oh, oh. Almost done. <laughs> The child's not in there, is there? No. <laughs> Two and a half hours. He's gonna look really awesome. But you know, it's not all over. My blood pressure's still high. I had to say there, my loves, that I'm not going to be able to show you what that was. That was so graphic. Okay, let me vaguely explain. The laser, you saw the laser. The laser's not that dramatic. But the um, opening of the tissue, shall we say, of the eye is a lot to behold. It's a lot to behold. It all seems very sensitive in that area. Ooh, it's a bit much. Wow. We are really getting into it today, my loves. My blood pressure's still high until I can open his eye and make sure he can see. So that's where the fasting and praying comes through. <laughs> you know, it's been said the day you lose your fear, you should quit. Oh. And when we operate, we know all the steps backwards and forwards. I suppose there does need to be a, nervous, a professional like concern. If I hear the concern. monitor's going a little faster during surgery, I know that it's normal, but uh, I always operate a little scared. Even in the, with the best intentions and best training, best intensity, best surgery, there could be some problems. Of course. Two hours after surgery. Okay, let me put a little more cream on here. Sure, right? Yes. The pain's oh. coming from the skin or are your eyeball? Eyeball. Is that throbbing, crushing, pressure pain. With that kind of a pain, you gotta act fast. If you miss it, they can go blind. The first thing that came to my mind was, oh my God, I'm gonna go blind. Very serious, very serious business. To be honest with you, I was a little nervous. He said, you know, Dr. Ray, I have a little pain in my left eye. We don't fool around with that. I'm just a tad nervous right now. What? Look how she falls into her armpit. Oh! Look at that. It's literally in her armpit. Oh! Oh my god! What? That's the end of the episode! What? 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 We don't find out! Oh my god! I'm literally, I'm on the edge of my seats, my loves. That is... What's happening? Okay, I think I found my favorite, favorite series that we've ever done on this Chanel, my lovelies. Good heavens. I am strapped in and strapped on and ready to watch more. Well, my loves, I'm going to pop my laptop away from me there and take out my Ohringer and just sort of like digest what we have seen today. Okay, at first, when we first started watching this episode, I was a bit like, okay, there's definitely a tone in this show. There's a lot more calm it's a lot more collected it feels a lot more professional but the actual content that we have seen in this has gone so far beyond what i expected we would see not only have we seen someone who's had botched operations we've also actually seen a pretty in-depth actual cosmetic surgery and right at the end there i don't know if they're trying to go through that tv reality tv sort of like genre of being like it's drama you know like on bridal plastic where they kind of edited the end of one episode to make it look like allison had flatlined right at the end which made no sense at all but it was very like on the edge of your seat what's gonna happen next i feel so like, I don't know, the claws of TV are fully... Oh, I've beaten you. The claws of this show are fully into me, and I'm very... Uh, anticipation, is that the word? I'm very anticipating the next episode, my loves. Wow, I can't believe what we've seen today. And this was only a 20-minute episode, and I feel like we've seen so much. I wonder how the rest of this season is going to play out. Let me know what you think about what we've seen today in today's episode, my loves, because I'm... I'm a bit gagged, a little bit gagged. Let me know also if you want me to continue with this series on my Chanel, because this, this is a lot. And I guess, my lovelies, it's time for the Patreons. You can see yourself scrolling past on the screen right here, my loves. Yes, you can. Thank you so much for allowing my channel to thrive and survive, my lovelies. And I want to say a huge brand new welcome to Tudor B, Francis McGinn, Indigo N, Laura Jane, Vanessa. <laughs> <laughs> Gabriella Shorver, Candy Five, 
or Candy V and Zoe Sevier, my loves. Thank you so much for joining the Patreons, you absolutely gorgeous people. Today's Twitch shout out goes to Princess Crimson. Thank you so much for following me over on Twitch, you standing woman on the go. And if you want to be in with a chance of being featured in my next video's Twitch shout out, make sure you follow me over on Twitch. It is Laxaria Plays and I stream two nights a week. As always, my lovelies, I want to say a massive thank you to my top tier Patreons. Aloria, Stephanie Niotupski, Laura Ali, Dr. Dreamarella, Steph Utech, Orcos Samoji, Abigail Ash, Beebles32, Caitlin Coating, Shell Herman, Christina Kyle, ContraPoints, Crafty Leaks, Danielle, Dr. A, Jevon, Elizabeth Stone, Igogo Yubari, Jarrah Pavlovsky, Jen Martin, Jenny Hendricks, Caitlin Wright, Min Min TM, Moisten98, Moriah Sherman, Nixie Tricks, Paula Rivera, Pink Car Caramel, Princess Lilium, Rachel V, C Biscuit, Romano, Ryan Vita, Sasha Smith, Tecti Texi RN, Slampire Queen, Succubus Lena, Travafall, Tromo, Victoria Corella, Victoria Waldock, and Zaya Naza. And you know what, my lovelies? I'm going to leave it on the note of always, always, always make sure you check out your surgeon's work before you go to them. And that kind of goes alongside everything, really. Whether you're getting lip fillers, Botox, a little bit of touching up here and there, maybe even your makeup artists. Make sure you see their body of work before you book them. And with that, my loves, I will see you in the next video. <gasps> yeah.